Welcome back students. In this video lecture, we will be discussing the second parasitic helminth worm that is Echinococcus which affects a man and dog. They are commonly called as a dog tapeworm. They are commonly called as a dog tapeworm and it causes a disease called as a hyatid disease or Echinococcus cockle disease or it is also called as a echinococcus and it is found in the human being caused by the larval stages of the different species of tapeworm of the genus echinococcus these are the short tapeworm as you can see the picture here which will be having only the two to three Proglotid. You can see here, gloated uh, these segments, only the two to two, three segments will be the not as long as a tapeworm. The first cystic echinococcus is caused by the echinococcus granulosus, and the second it is a alveolar echinococcus, and there is a multi localis. Third one, it is a polycystic echinococcus, it is caused by the echinococcus. Vogeli and a very rare variety of Echinococcus oligathus. So these are the different species of Echinococcus. That is granulosa, it is a one species. Another one, it is alveolar Echinococcus. Then there is Echinococcus multilocularis. Then there is Echinococcus vogeli. Then the last or the rare one, it is a Oligather. So these are the different species of Echinococcus that affects a man and dog. This Echinococcus is actually a, uh, that causes a parasitic uh, disease that affects the humans and also the other mammals like sheep, dog, rodents and horses. So it not only affects uh, dogs but also these higher chordates. This adult parasite is only 3 to 9 millimeter in length. So this is a microscopic image and it is only 3 to 9 only 3 to 9 millimeter in length and has only 3 proglotis. This is a 1, 2 and 3. Almost only the 3 proglotid. So when compared to that of the tapeworm, it is much smaller in size. And this scolex, it is globular in shape and has a rostrum. Here you can see the rostrum. So let's see this picture here. This is a rostrum that is armed with the double rows of hook. You can see the hooks here and behind the scolex it is a unsegmented neck. This is a neck region which is unsegmented. Then a uh, strobila consists of immature. This is a immature Progloted, then there is a mature pro progloted here, and this is a gravid progloted. So only the three type. This is this is a immature type. This is a immature type. This is a mature type, and this progloted it is a gravid progloted. So this is a the three proglotid which is seen in echinococcus and the embryo inside the eggs are called as a oncosphere or the hexacanth with the six hooks. So this is a picture representing the life cycle of echinococcus. As we said earlier the adult echinococcus the length varies from 2 to 7 millimeter long and it resides in the snail intestine of the definite host and the gravid proglotid releases the egg the gravid proglotid releases the egg as you can see in this picture here this is a gravid proglotid and this you can see the egg inside the uterus and uh, it get released and they are passed along with the fecal matter so when an infected man releases a fecal matter along with the fecal matter this eggs are also released 
and after the injection by a suitable intermediate host the egg hatch so the egg hatches in the small intestine and uh, releases a six hook oncospheres the six hook this oncosphere it is released and it penetrates the intestinal wall and actually it migrates through the circulatory system into the various organs especially in the liver lungs and in these organs the oncosphere develops into a thick walled hyatid cyst as you can see in this picture this is a hyatid cyst and we this cyst enlarges gradually producing the proteus and the daughter cyst and you can see here inside this hyatid cyst a small small cyst interior you can see here then the definite host becomes infected by ingesting the cyst containing the organs of the affected intermediate host and the after induction and once uh, after or once it gets enter into the body of the other host that is a definite host what happens is that the proteus invaginates proteus in this you can see here the small cyst and this each cyst the proto scolosis ev evaginates and attached to the intestinal mucosa and it develops into the adult stages so from the cyst what happens the proto scolex arises as we have seen in the tinea solium the life cycle there is an inverted evagination of the egg takes place and there is a uh, ar arise the, there is a projection or the uh, the results in the arise of the proto scolex from the evaginated part and this proto scolex get attached to the intestinal mucosa and it develops into the adult stages into the adult stages in or uh, into the adult echinococcus and within uh, 32 to 80 days this becomes a uh, develops into the grave into a fully grown echinococcus and the cycles uh, repeats so the oncospheres are released in the intestine and the hyatid cyst develops into a variety of organs and if the cyst ruptures it li liberate the proteus collexus and may secrete the secondary cyst in the other sites within the body and the secondary echinococcus echinococcus arises that means a secondary infection takes place in the same individual so we will just uh, see the life cycle once again so if a man is infected by this echinococcus through the fecal matter the embryonic egg gets released out and accidentally this embryonic eggs reaches the body of a intermediate host then what happens this eggs or the oncosphere hatches and penetrates into the intestinal wall and it becomes a hyatid cyst and gets deposited in the liver lungs etc and from there if this is happens to enter back into a definite host what happens this hyatid cyst liberates a Protoss collex from the cyst, and the protoss collex develops into the adult echinococcus. Okay, and if again this accidentally reaches the human body, what happens? A secondary infection to the same organism uh, or the same individual takes place. That means if we accidentally he eat the muscles of uh, these vertebrate infected vertebrate muscles of the infected vertebrate with this uh, cyst then this again reaches the body of the organism or body of man and the secondary infection causes and it's that condition is called as a secondary echinococcus and uh, the symptoms are the high fever and eventually death and this echinococcus can be controlled through the preventive measures the various preventive measures that we can take here this can be achieved by avoiding the contact with the dogs then feeding raw animal 
crow animal cacas to the dogs so avoid uh, giving dogs raw food the treatment in flu uh, includes or involves the removal of the cyst or the inactivation of the hyatid sand okay so i hope uh, the life cycle is clear for you the next uh, we will just see the enlarged view of this hyatid cyst this is a picture of a hyatid cyst so inside the single hyatid cyst you can see the numerous cysts are there at various stages this is a preliminary stage second stage third and the fourth stage okay and after that the proglo proto scolex get detached and this when the cyst wall breaks when it reaches the intestinal fluid the cyst wall breaks and all the proto scolex emerges out and this proto scolex gets attached to the wall of the intestine and it develops into the echino adult echino coccus within uh, 32 to 80 days okay so this is a structure it is having a cuticle cover layer below that there is a germinal layer then numerous daughter cyst are there then grand daughter cyst are also there then the liberated protoscolexes are also there then there are the brood capsules you can see the small small brood capsules so a small cyst may contain this is a small cyst which can be of 1 cm in diameter and a small cyst can contain thousands of uh, or uh, sorry the hundreds of protoscolexes as you can see here hundreds of protoscolexes and due to the granular appearance this protoscolexes within the cyst are commonly called as a hyatid sand and the cysts are usually filled with a clear fluid called as a hyatid fluid this is filled with the fluid called as a hyatid fluid and this hyatid disease may be may become fatal when the cyst are found in the vital parts of the body and uh, if the cyst ruptures in the body what happens is that whether during the surgical extraction of the cyst the patient would likely go into the anaphylactic shock and suffer from the high fever and eventually the death can occurs Uh, so the only way to control the echinococcus is to undergo the certain preventive measures and this can be attached uh, this can be uh, achieved by avoiding the contact with dogs feeding the raw animal uh, carcass that is a dead body of animals especially one from the slaughter houses if we just feed the raw food uh, or the raw meat for the animal that can cause the echinococcus and we have to avoid the feeding this uh, raw meat to the animal uh, dogs and the treatment involves the removal of the cyst or the inactivation of the hyatid sand so that's all about the echinococcus so echinococcus they are commonly known as a dog tapeworm and it causes a disease called as a hyatid disease So that's all in this video lecture thank you